Ready, we're good to go. So Leviticus 22 through 24, we're coming to the end. We're coming to the end. Now, after we finish Leviticus, we're going to take a little break. We're going to jump to Ephesians for the only reason is that I have to write a Bible study on that for my ordination papers. <laughs> so it's easier for me to focus on one Bible study than focus on two, and I've got to get these papers done. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, because I looked at much numbers and I Take a break. <laughs> little, little break. How, how um, long of a break? Uh, three weeks. Oh, you didn't take us to Christmas. Well, no, I'm not even that. I think it's only going to be two weeks. I'll have to check. I'll have to check. Well, okay. Maybe I'll stretch it out. It's going it, to take me long to, to write that Bible study. Because I'm going <clears> to <throat> have pastors looking over that one, so i got to be really, really careful. The good news is I have my I have the ordination questions done already, and my seminary professor has already reviewed them. He had very few changes, so the tough ones are done already. You're on your way. <laughs> I'm on my way. So Leviticus 22 through 24. So last week we talked about Leviticus 21. That was the the first part of the writings for for priests, and now we're in the second part in Leviticus 22. And we know that because God tells Moses, tell Aaron and his sons. So God is saying, here's the rules for Aaron, his sons, and his sons' sons, for now and forever. That this is how they have to do things. They have to treat with respect the sacred offerings the Israelites consecrate to me, so they will not profane my holy name. I am the Lord. Because we know what happened to two of Aaron's sons, well, they didn't pay attention. God wiped them out. God wiped them out. Harsh consequences. Harsh consequences. But like any law, you've got to pay attention to the law. Otherwise, you got to pay the price. What, what did um, Beretta say? If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. But that means you had to watch that show in the 70s. <laughs> I did. I digress. Um, in verse th verse 3, if any of your descendants is ceremonially unclean, yet comes near the sacred offerings that the Israelites consecrate to the Lord, that person will be cut off from my presence. So God is saying the priests have to be as blemish-free as the sacrifices. I gave, I gave you these rules. You have, to, you have to make sure you're bathed. You have to make sure that you, you've abstained. You have to make sure that you're ready to offer the sacrifice to me. If a descendant of Aaron has a defiling skin disease, and we know that they were probably talking about leprosy, but it could be anything. Once again, those are the blemishes that, that God doesn't want. You have to be, you have to be pure. Did leprosy weep? Was it a weeping sore? Um, like... Like chicken pox or something. Like I don't that. think so, but it, it kind of ate limbs too, kind of. Right, because yeah. it was um, it was one of those diseases where your your skin just dies. The yeah. nerve the nerves died first, and sometimes you got boils, it's and awful. it was a it was an awful disease. And there's, as we found out in a couple of the other the earlier chapters of Leviticus, there's two different types of leprosy. One was contagious, but one wasn't. Since they weren't doctors, God identified to them what it looks like. And remember, um, you can check the notes from one of the previous chapters. If the skin, or if the hair on your arm turned white, then it was one type of leprosy. And if it didn't, if it looked a different way, it was another type of leprosy. So God told them, he identified to them in the laws what to look for. So it's, it's amazing that that God provided for everything that they needed through these these times. I was wondering if, 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 if they had chicken pox and measles and things back at that time too. I don't, yeah, know. We don't know. And things. And so, you know, I'm, I was wondering if anybody knew. They, they said it, that... Because some of this describes that. Right. In, in some of the diseases they described, could be impetigo, could be pimples, could be boils, and it could have been chickenpox. Ringworm. Could have been ringworm. Yeah, it could have been all those things that you know we were warned about in the '60s. 
growing up in the 60s, you know, don't play in the, the puddles, don't do this, don't do that, otherwise you're going to get these diseases. But I they wonder if they've ever done some research on skeletal remains because I have heard that they did have arthritis back then. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yes. yes. Skeletal remains. Good to know. We're and not the only ones. We know ones. they had gout because yeah. they looked at the, the bones of the, the pharaohs mm -hmm. uh -huh. and they saw that they had gout. Okay. Of course, they ate all these rich foods so right. and they didn't worry about nutrition or anything else. But they didn't know about Verse 2 it mentioned separate. In that, one of the big verses in uh, Leviticus, be holy because I am holy. Right. Yes. And to be holy is to mean to be separate. Or yeah, set aside. Set aside. And, and that's, um, God made a lot of these, almost all the rules, to set the Israelites aside from the other people in the area. So whatever land they were going into, they were pretty right. Yeah. Oh yeah, they had the, the child sacrifices and um, they got drunk when they worshiped and they had orgies and everything else and God says, you're not going to be like those people. Mm -hmm. You're going to be separate unto myself. Getting them prepared. Right, right. Uh, <coughs> bless Excuse you. Me. Thank you. Sorry. In, Sorry. in verse 10, it's kind of, uh, <coughs> verse 10 and 11 kind of interesting. No one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offering, nor may the guest of a priest or his hired worker eat it. So God is being very selective on who can eat this holy food. But if a priest buys a slave with money, or if slaves are born into his household, they may eat his food. So even though slavery existed at the time, God's saying, you need to make these people part of your family. All the food they were eating was oh, the result of the sacrifices right. on what they could eat, and that wasn't yep. burned up. Yep. Constant supply they, of. I was thinking some of these sacrifices were more like our offerings. Right. Some some of it was burnt up totally as an offering to God, but some of the offerings, like the fellowship offering, that was set aside so it could be shared with people. And as we found out from last week's study. Um, God didn't want you to be cheap about it either. You know, only the best. Only the best because it's sacrificed first towards God, and then His people were able to eat of it. No tuna fish casserole, just no tuna fish food. casserole. Mm -hmm. None of that tater tot casserole for breakfast. <laughs> only the best. Only I don't know. That does sound like the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, they were serving that at FCA on Tuesday, and it looked pretty good. Of course, everything looks good before breakfast. So, but the kids loved it. They loved it. Um, so God is saying, you know, sometimes God realizes that he, he, he has to make adjustments for humans. In this case, he had to make adjustments for humans and allow them to have slaves. Because these people couldn't do everything themselves. So they had slaves. But God said... Even though they're your slaves, you've got to treat them the right way. You have to treat them like family. And you can't beat them. You can't take advantage of them. If a priest's daughter marries anyone other than a priest, she may not eat any of the sacred contributions. Why do you think that was? Husband should provide for her. Husband should provide for her. And God identified in Genesis the man and the wife become one. So she's no longer part of that priestly family. She left that family, she became one with her husband, so now she's no longer a priest in any way or form. So That's outside of Leviticus, if she had married a Levite? Right, if she, could, if she married a priest, then she was still a priest. Okay. Because she became one with that family. Now, if she became a widow without children, and she returns to her father's house, then she can eat it again. Because she has no males to take care of her. Because we know the situation that widows and... Um, oh, if she has children that is widowed, she still needs someone to take care of her. The children are well, supposed to take care of right. her, probably. Yeah. Oh, well. oh. But what happens if they're... Um, we little ones. Little tykes. Not. Too bad. We'll see what happens. Maybe her in-laws are supposed to take care of her. That could... Possibly. Well, well, we know... Um, that if she was widowed, 
and there was brother. another brother, he would have to marry her. So that oh, he would, okay. That's right. She would be taken care of that yeah. way. Okay. So God provided for everything. You know, that follows through in um, immigrant times. Because in my family tree, my sister was doing our research and found out we have a relative who with one brother had five children and then another brother, she married him not that long after he died with another three children. So, um, because that is what he did. He stepped up and took over for his brother. Yeah. It's kind of a strange thing, but she said, no, we had two brothers marry the same woman. Mm. But that's... You know, so I'm thinking, well, a biblical times, I guess that's what they did. They had to take care of the women. Yeah, when it was Wisconsin, so, you know, you will die if you're not taken care of or have someone to help you. And they, had, they were on farms, and there were, yeah. you know, people were probably spaced apart. I guess it didn't matter to time of year, or wherever you lived, it would be harsh. So, yeah. Verse 15 and 16. The priests must not desecrate the sacred offerings the Israelites present to the Lord by allowing them to eat the sacred offerings and so bring upon them guilt requiring the payment. Um, and here again that in verse 14, the fifth part, the penalty again. Yeah, 25%. Pretty substantial. 20%. 20%. Yes, sorry, yeah, 20%. 20 percent. My math was wrong this morning. 20%. Pretty substantial. That comes up again and again. Yeah. Unacceptable sacrifices. We found early on in Leviticus that the priests weren't just responsible for making the sacrifices. They were responsible for checking the quality of them, too. Speak to Aaron and his sons, God says, and to all the Israelites. Present a gift of a burnt offering. Uh, present a male without defect from the cattle, sheep, or goats, in order that it might be accepted on my behalf. Do not bring in anything with a defect, because it will not be accepted. So God's putting a lot of responsibility on the priests. Um, in Malachi chapter 1, verse 14, God wants to make sure that he's not cheated, that we offer him the first fruits. So in Malachi we hear, Cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, and my name is to be feared among the nations. God was really specific in what he wanted as a sacrifice. He wanted the first fruits. He also wanted something without blemish. So don't do otherwise. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Verse 11 kind of clears it up. Uh, verse 24. You must not offer to the Lord an animal whose te testicles are bruised, crushed, or torn, and you must not do this to your own land, and you must not accept such animals. So, God is saying, if, if you've got a bull whose testicles are bruised or crushed, he's really not good as being a bull because he can't fertilize any cows. So God's saying, you can't give me that offering because it's not valuable to you. Mm. Same thing like where God says, you can't um, sacrifice wild game to me because it didn't cost you anything, except maybe the arrow or the bullet you used to kill it. So it has to have some value to us, otherwise it's not a um, good sacrifice. So they have to own it. They have to own it. And we even see in the, the olive oil. The olive oil has to be um, pressed, it has to be filtered, it has to be pure. We'll see that later on. Um, and the grain had only be the finest grain that was ground. So God is saying it has to have value to you. Otherwise, you're not really giving up anything. Kind of like giving expired food in the food pantry or something. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Or or oysters. We've seen that in the food pantry too. Smoked oysters. Turtle soup. Turtle soup. I had one in Turtle Wisconsin. Soup. It sat on that shelf for years. We finally threw it out. People don't want it, so they give it to the food pantry. Right. Or, or spam. 
No, spam would go. Spam would go. Spam would go. <laughs> spam would go. Yeah. yeah. I've never had spam. <laughs> I, I can't. Uh -oh. I, I don't know. It, it, Guess what you'll get next week. Uh, <laughs> it up in a I'll try it. It's, a, <laughs> it's a little bit salty. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have the less salt. Not to have raised on a little bit of spam. Never had. You, you, really? Never. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank goodness. No. Spiced ham, I had my dad like that on the right. sandwich I, for work. I used to eat that a lot. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I didn't. Probably it was. It's similar, I think, to spam spiced it's ham. It's yeah, just it's a cold same. cut versus a chunk in well, you gelatin. Can, you can slice that up or dice it up or whatever. You can fry it. They have commercials for spam and, now and on TV. It, it, it tastes like ham. It's yeah. a it's a delicacy in Hawaii. It is. Yes. It, it, it's, yeah. a it's like Portuguese. Yeah. It's a staple in right. Hawaii. Portuguese. Yeah. If you go into McDonald's, they have Portuguese sausage My in McDonald's. Took us <laughs> to a, in Minnesota, took us to a spam. Factory. Really? And you, you could, you know, they give you like free spam to taste. Sample? And the smell was, you know, because they make tons of it. It was, I just about thought I was going to pass out. It was just horrible. Yeah. Is that Hormel? I think Hormel makes I think, spam. I think what's Hormel? Yeah. But, but she don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> I remember eating it a long time ago when, you know, I think it's a good staple to have on the shelf in case yes. you have nothing else and right. you can pull out that can of Spam and you forget to take something out of the freezer. It's always right. good. Chunk I, it, serve I'd it. I'd rather have a can of black beans around. That's true. <laughs> but, but then, Peanut you know, butter, I've right. I've never had Spam, so I don't know. Spam, right. I didn't think, I didn't think it was all that bad. No. It's, it's not, not bad. bad. It's not bad. It, it, fry it. It's good fried. Yeah. See, but, but every group has their own food that they like. You know, I grew up eating oxtail soup. Ugh. To me, I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I but it's good. I was gonna make it, and back in the day when it was like you could get it for free, now they charge fifteen bucks a pound for oxtail <laughs> because yeah. it's a delicacy. Well, it's kind of like the the pork things now. Wow, uh, what's the pork gum? But uh, pork bellies. Oh, yeah. At restaurants, it's like a nouveau kind of thing right. to make. I'm thinking, seriously? You know, but now it's like expensive to make. Right. And it's like right. pork bellies. Yeah. Were, no, I know. Can't afford oxtails anymore. <laughs> That's a crime. Uh, so this was all part of a free will offering from yes. verse 23? Yep. And it was going to be shared with other people. So God's saying, don't cheat your friends. Don't even cheat your friends. What I, what I found interesting was um, in verse 27, from the eighth day on, it will be acceptable as a food offering presented to the Lord. Now, um, is it, yeah, there wouldn't okay. be enough meat after eight days. Eight days. Yeah. Well, well, a cat or lamb. Right. Or There's still quite a bit more. of meat on a cow at eight days. It, yeah, it says... For some reason, now there's no science behind this, but maybe there is. It says the animal is not fit for eating before the eighth day. Now, it I must guess, remain with its mother for the first seven days. Yeah, to be, so I, to be, uh, I guess, somewhat <coughs> weaned. But it's not old enough to wean. Yeah, I'd have to do some more research to see if there's some chemical reason why. Well, the same way with circumcision. I was just going to yeah. say it's the circumcision. It was by no, what? God's, the, God has to have a reason. So many days. So. Oh. Um, a couple weeks ago, we had a question: it, Why, why they had to lay two hands on the goat's head, yeah, and not one? Well, um, in the Hebrew and in some English translations, it does say hand. So some translations say both hands, some say one hand. So there's no significance to the two hands. Okay, so just follow up from there. Uh, but regarding the eighth day, I'll have to do a little bit more research to see if there's some reason. Because we know God had a reason for no circumcisions before the eighth day because the baby might bleed out. And this is after the eighth day, or on the eighth day, uh, the baby has the highest percentage of antibodies that they'll ever have in their entire life. So God has a reason. I'll have to find out what that is. So seven was the Lord's... Uh Completion number, right. large number, okay. Yep, yep. Um, and then we get into the appointed festivals. Oh, 
Okay, and like what Gary brought. Yep, so we can hit, keep Gary's chart out here. Now, these are all the festivals, starting with the Sabbath day all the way through. So speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. Now, God is saying you must gather on these days. Some people say, well, I don't need to go to church because I can worship at home. Sorry, Scripture says it's a sacred assembly. You have to gather. You can read your Bible at home. You can pray at home. If you're going to be at home with two or three more people, okay, then maybe you're worshiping. But in lieu of that, come and gather and worship me. And Jesus, um, we're supposed to follow Jesus, and Jesus doesn't have a habit of going to church. I can't remember how it's worded in the Bible. Yeah, he went to temple. Is this like a monthly feast then? Well, there's all different ones. Um, do you have the color chart? Yeah. Okay, good. So um, we're going to, mostly these, these aren't monthly feasts. These would be annual feasts. Okay. Spring, fall. Yep. So first first feast we have, the first sacred assembly, um, oh, let, let's backtrack. Um, Leviticus 23, that is, it lists all our different assemblies. And it's divided, Leviticus 23 is divided up into a couple different sections. The spring festivals, like we see on Gary's chart, are in verses 4 through 22, and the autumn festivals are in verses 23 through 43. Um, but there's three festivals that are left out of this list. There's the New Moon Festival, which is given to us in Numbers. We'll see that in Numbers 28. The sabbatical year, which is laid out for us um, in Leviticus 25, so we'll see that next week. And um, that was given to the Israelites after they got into the Promised Land. Because we see as, as we read it, um, the sab sabbatical, the yeah, sabbatical year would occur every seventh year where there was no planting or pruning of crops. You just had to leave everything go. So is that why, is this the part of the Bible where they tell the farmers you should let your crops rest every seven years? Let the ground rest.